Maria, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it's great to have you here. Yes, thank you for having me, Yaz, and congrats on such a good conference and event so far that Rework has put on. Thank you so much. Um, well, yeah, so before we kind of get started, do you want to give me a bit of an overview of what you're doing at the um, AI for Government Summit and a bit of an overview of your work? Sure, so I'm an AI policy and ethics researcher at the AI Initiative of the Future Society. And the Future Society is an AI governance think and do tank incubated at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. And we aim to shape governance and the rise of AI and emerging technologies to benefit society broadly while still mitigating their numerous downside risks, policy and ethical risks. And we do this with and for international organizations, development banks, national governments, and I can tell you more about what we're doing. Uh, so at this conference, I presented a presentation on the policy and ethical risks of AI. Mm -hmm. And I went through what are the main policy and ethical risks. And before getting into the challenges, uh, the um, governance approaches and solutions, taking stock of what are the major issues with attempting to govern AI and policy for AI, because it's, it's not really possible to have a blanket policy or like it is many other sectors, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you kind of like begin your work in this area in policy and AI? Yes, so I studied public policy at the graduate level at Harvard Kennedy School of Government. And before that, my undergraduate was in economics at Columbia University, which is in New York City. And then I had worked in economics research. But about a year ago, I took some time off to think to explore my interests rather than just mm -hmm. following such an inertia track that we get on after we graduate and go from one job to another. So I was reading, I was reading about technology, listening to TED Talks, and I read the Homo Deus by Harari and became quite alarmed at how AI will have a very significant impact on societies. Yeah, absolutely. Across such a broad range of domains. Mm -hmm. I was first interested in the impact on the economy and the potential for mass unemployment from automation because my background had been economics. Yeah. So this was my entryway into the topic. And then I read, there was basically at this point last fall 2017 just one course on AI policy like w that I knew of mm -hmm. in the world and it was at Yale by Professor Alan Dafoe who is now at Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute leading a program on AI governance. So I kind of tested my interest in the field by reading his entire syllabus, it took like a month, and then I was like, okay, I'm definitely passionate about this topic, yeah. and I had learned about the topic, so I was in a position to then reach out to people in my network and start to ask about opportunities to work in the field. Mm -hmm. And I guess because it was, because you said there was only one course, was it not too difficult to kind of feel like you were catching up? Exactly. It's such a new field. Yeah. So AI has been around for a while, but AI policy, where we're really starting to think about the social implications from bias to weapons to unemployment, people have been talking about impact of technology on unemployment for a while since mm. Keynes coined technological unemployment. But the scale that AI will cause is, so new, is, is quite new and uh, consequential. So. It's quite easy to catch up in AI policy. I think there's been, this is maybe the second year that major AI policy conferences are happening, if not the first for many conferences like this one. Yeah, for sure. So um, I would encourage people who are interested in the field to read some syllabi, and I can tell you the name of those courses, and to get involved. Yeah, that would be really great, because it's obviously good to know how to get started if it's something you're interested in going into. I think sometimes it can be quite daunting to think, where, where do you get started? So yeah, that would be really great. Um, but yes. can you kind of give us a bit of a background of what you're currently working on, what projects you're working on, and what your goals are? Yes, so we, as mentioned, work with international organizations like the OECD, mm -hmm. development banks like International American uh, Inter-American Development Bank and World Bank, and national governments. So the UAE, which has the world's first ministry for AI, mm -hmm. and minister for AI, has commissioned the Future Society to support their upcoming World Government Summit 
and it's the second year there that we are doing a Global Governance for AI Roundtable. Okay, amazing. GGAR. Mm -hmm. And for this, last year we brought together 100 top AI policy leaders and industry leaders. We're doing the same this year, but in preparation we're writing several papers on the topics at the roundtable, which cover the full range of AI policy issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm leading up writing the papers for this. And it's everything from impact on the economy to cybersecurity to geopolitics of AI. This is a major project. We're also teaching an AI policy course at Sciences Po uh, Paris School of International Affairs, which is a graduate level course. Again, one of the few in the world on AI policy. So we're preparing for that. And there's several conferences that I can speak about too. Mm -hmm. So you just mentioned cybersecurity and some other areas, but yes. what do you think are the main um, policy and ethical risks involved in AI? So to answer that question, I think we need some criteria for what we consider to be important mm -hmm. because there is existential risk for humanity from AI. Yeah, of course. And this is caused by an AGI or a very intelligent system that has capabilities and we maybe don't have control over it or can't, we don't have corrigibility or ability to update it or there's not value alignment, which is when we have an autonomous system and it's attempting to achieve its objective function in the real world mm -hmm. and facing new scenarios in the real world that we haven't trained it for, how do we make sure that it still acts in ways that are safe and aligned with our ethics and values and that maybe humans aren't some um, intermediary in the way that it can get rid of on its objective to cure climate change, or whatever. So, so there's a host of these sorts of risks, but bias is a very important risk. Impact mm -hmm. on unemployment. We could have mass unemployment. The time scale on that is uncertain, maybe medium, medium term, long term. Similarly, the impact, I don't think we'll have 100% unemployment, but maybe more than 50%. This would be enough to really disrupt our current political economy models, our democratic models, which rely on taxation and this feedback loop between the government and people. And this could lead to massive inequality, growing digital divide, lack of inclusion. Mm. So that's a whole other set of issues. Then there are cybersecurity risks, which we have more data being collected about us from wearable devices that give biometric data or the growing digital revolution and our mobile devices or IOT data. And this data isn't secure. Mm -hmm. We'll have digital uh, autonomous systems like autonomous vehicles or drones that, or personal assistant robots that can be hacked or AI toys that can be hacked. So we should expect to see more and more cyber attacks. And there's, meanwhile, there's a shortage in cybersecurity talent. So it, I don't know, which of those do you think is most important? Like they're all very important and consequential. Mm. So I guess it's important for us to create AI that is working alongside humans rather than replacing or bettering them. It's important for humans and machines to work collaboratively rather than repla one replacing the other. For the impl economic mm. employment? Maybe, I think that could provide for human jobs yeah. for a while. I'm not really optimistic that we will be able to keep everybody employed. Yeah, of course. In the medium to long term, mm -hmm. nor necessarily should we, if we're able to ideally capture the productivity gains that AI can lead to. Yeah. For example, taxing a company or collecting this wealth into some sovereign trust and redistributing it, maybe like a universal basic income type scenario. Several economists have proposed different options. Mm -hmm. Ideally, then, maybe humans could still have a meaningful livelihood and spend their time doing more meaningful things. Yeah, of course. And so do you think it's important for everyone who works in AI to kind of have an overview of elements such as policy, ethics, cybersecurity, or do you think it should just be reserved for the people working in policy and governance? People who are designing AI products and mm. developing them have to have in mind standards and precautions for collecting and using representative data sets so yeah. that we don't have algorithmic bias for testing and sufficiently training an autonomous system like an autonomous vehicle to be safe and robust in new environments to protect the hardware from cyber attacks
designers and developers need to have these in mind. Mm. So do you think there should be global policies in place or do you think this should be done on like a case by case basis? So in some topics like for example lethal autonomous weapons um, there are conversations about a global ban mm -hmm. and that might be a good initiative whether it's feasible or not because AI is very difficult to monitor yeah. unlike nuclear weapons is another question mm -hmm. but otherwise AI is really a broad range of technologies and methods yeah. with different implications across these different applications. So the implications on the healthcare sector, for example, where human lives are at risk. So for example, there are medical diagnostic tools right now mm -hmm. or treatment recommendations. We might need different policies for this than AI that's used in another sector. Yeah. So I think industry right now is really concerned and worried about over-regulation because of some blanket regulation for AI, which AI is really a full range of technologies that means everything and nothing all at once. And that there is so much variation that it's not really feasible nor recommendable because we, again, don't want to stifle beneficial innovation. Mm. This is another interesting ethical question for AI innovation. We, want, we need AI for beneficial innovation, for progress of, towards AI for good. Mm -hmm progress towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which is the topic of the AI for Good conference. But we need safety and precautions in place. Yeah, definitely. So how should policymakers manage these? This yeah. is an example of the complexity that makes AI policy so consequential and so interesting. Definitely. So, I mean, it sounds like a lot that you're working on and a lot that's going on in the policy space. So what does the next 12 months look like for you in your work? Yes, so we have this Global Governance of AI Roundtable in Dubai, which is a very high profile event bringing together really the top thought leaders in AI policy and governance. And in December, we're, I'm moderating a panel on AI governance at the Digital Society Conference in Berlin at ESMT, which is a school. And that will have Gosha Woj from Big Innovation Center, who's a speaker here, mm -hmm. Professor Alan Defoe, the Chief Innovation Officer of Volkswagen will be there. And that's exciting because it's interdisciplinary, so we can talk with industry and policy and academia about AI governance. We're teaching these courses, which I mentioned, and I can give more details about that here or offline for interested and enthusiastic young AI policy students. Yeah, definitely. That sounds great. Um, and I, I mean, it does sound like you've got a lot going on. We'll definitely um, link all of these courses that you mentioned below. But um, mm -hmm. how can we keep up to date with you and your work? Do you have a Twitter? Or do you have a website that we can follow you on? Yes. So you can look at the Future Society website, mm -hmm. though, for the, until maybe winter or January 2019, it's in process. Mm -hmm. So it might be better to reach out to me directly. OK, brilliant. At Yolanda, Y-O-L-A-N-D-A. Dot Lanquist, L A N N Q U I S T, at thefuturesociety.org, or on LinkedIn, Yolanda Lanquist, or on Twitter, which is at Yolanda Lanquist, but you remove the letter U in Lanquist. Okay, because I'll it link it underneath. <laughs> um, so I can, I'm happy to share the new syllabi that we've prepared for this AI policy course, which is really up to date and talks about cybersecurity, but also AI for SDGs mm -hmm. and global governance of AI and safety and unemployment, full range of topics. And then the Future Society also takes interns and research fellows of all levels, so we're happy to discuss that. Amazing. We'll really encourage people to get in touch with you then, because it sounds like you've got some great opportunities there. We but do, and I think it's such an exciting field, and I would really urge young people to get interested because it is early stage so mm. it's easy to get involved and not be too far behind. If you have a angle or expertise I think it would help mm -hmm. so whether it's technical or policy or law or science or climate because interdisciplinary approaches will really add value to this field. Definitely well thank you so much for chatting to me today it's been really interesting yes. and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event here today. Thank you so much. Thank you.